Hello everybody, welcome to Mortal Fury. I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Glad you joined us this week. Uh, if you guys watched last week's show, I wanted to uh, make a comment about that. Okay. Uh, Chris was doing an uh, excellent job on what he brought. He was bringing some information from uh, Corinthians, mm -hmm. and I was loving it. And a little bit to let you all know, if some of you don't know what we do here, you know, Chris and I, we, we believe that we, we're just sharing things we learn, and our heart is to share uh, the love of the Father and what he's done for all of us, for all of his creation, through his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and that's our heart. That's kind of been the start, what we started out doing. We really feel like we've come on to some big, big things about God and his love, and so we just want to share that. And so in doing that, there, there was a little bit of uncomfortableness, I think, a little bit of uh, maybe doubt or fear sometimes, because Chris and I know we're not Greek scholars here. No, oh, gosh, no. And we're going to be talking about, about the scriptures. And so that's pretty, pretty heavy uh, to put things out there. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we want to be accurate the best we can. And so that all gets comical almost because uh, we're, like I just stated, we're not Greek scholars, obviously. <laughs> right? We all know it. But one of the best comments Thank you, we, Captain Obvious. One of the, the best comments we got, and one I love, was some guy called us out and said, well, you're no theological <laughs> scholar, or whatever he called yeah. it. What did he, uh, he said? You are theological not, scholars? Something. Like You're that. certainly not theological. And it's like, yeah. No, Captain, thank you. Captain yep. Obvious. <laughs> thank you. Of course we're, we're not. Um, and so, but there's a big point be, behind some of that. We really in our hearts feel like you certainly you do not have to be. And, and we want to encourage you out there that, no, you, you don't have to be. To know that God's revealing his love to you. And that you're his special creation. And he's got a plan for you. And we can see and confirm these things and these thoughts that God's revealing to us. We can see that in Paul's writings. And so we're just trying at best to bring out what Paul's saying. Now, we've stated that from the get-go. Anyway, I bring that up. As we're doing this, we started doing this, Chris, we get together, and he gives me a lot of license. Sometimes he doesn't know how this show is going to be edited or cut or anything. So we'll turn the camera on and... I'll edit it, and then the show, show will come out. And I, I appreciate that so much, that Chris has given me that freedom, and he, he's cool with it. A lot of times I'll call Chris, and I'll ask him questions. I'll be like, hey, should we put this in or put that out? Or So anyway, last week during the show, Chris made these great points that I cut out. <laughs> and, and I forget all the reasons why, but, I mean, we it was you know, a longer show. Chris was making a point, transitioning in something. I was then making comments. He's making comments. There was things that I was learning from Chris and from the scripture and from Paul at the time. that was like, wow, it was overwhelming. It was big. And then some of the points that we made, I wasn't sure about. So I'm like, well, I'll cut it. Well, then I ended up cutting way too much. Anyway, if you saw, saw last week's show, Chris was making these great points from Corinthians and showing these miraculous gifts that were given to the body at the time. That appear as we transition, it's like, where are all these gifts now, today? Mm -hmm. And so, um, anyway, if you didn't watch, you know, look back at that show, and I just wanted to encourage you all to consider some of those things, and to see if those gifts still apply today. Um, and why I'm saying that, I think it leads to, as you lead to, get into Ephesians, and these other books by Paul, it leads to, um, what we are, who you are, mm -hmm. and the one body, the body of Christ. And there's there's not then this hierarchy or these special gifts, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, today. Right. And I think that's really interesting. And like I said, I look for evidence. It appears that uh, we no longer have you know need for these special divine gifts that were at the time given. Mm-hmm. That's what it appears. That's to what me. it looks like. Yeah, that's. And what so it we want to make sure to that now. we didn't. Yeah, give up. So some of that, what I was cutting out, might have appeared that well, some still remain because that's how I used to look at it. Mm -hmm. And then I used to look at well, things it just all got washed together. Right. Like there's still different uh, functions today. Right. And it, it it to me it goes to the bigger question, where you and I. 
we know that we can't get it all right. We can't Mm-mm. that 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 it's there's going to be error. We look backwards and we mm-hmm. see error. Mm-hmm. Uh, so can we turn on the camera and actually tell you guys something that is error? And then if that's the case, where do you go from there? Um, yeah, and is that okay? It, yeah, is that okay if, if we screw up? Mm-hmm. And we say something that's in error. Yeah. <laughs> that gets scary, I think, for some people. Um, because we've said before, we want to be right. Oh, sure. That's Words matter. Right. Yeah. All of that is important. We're it's accuracy. To do, We're always going to attempt to be that way. But now, I have shared with Dean that, you know... I used to look at my religious training with a lot of contempt and um, I don't know what all the words I would use, but <clears throat> very frustrating, like as if it being lost time, I could have been in truth more, uh, the truth that I have today. Uh, but now I'm looking back and understanding that all of that was necessary. And when I look at what I believe today against the backdrop of what religious training I had, it makes today's truth so much more vibrant and so much more clear. And I mean, it, it just, I always say it just resonates mm-hmm. with something on the inside now. But I don't know that I'd have that if I didn't have the religious training. And then for me to look back at or look at those people today that are wrapped up in that with some sort of um, malicious attitude toward them or a hubris attitude that, look, you know, what I know today over, is ridiculous for me to do that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, but for God, I was doing the, I was, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still there. And, and yeah, and there's a reason that God had you where he had you. There's Absolutely. a reason where God has you right now. Right. And wherever he has you, it's you're playing your role perfectly. Mm-hmm. Perfectly. You're right where, he, exactly. right where you need to be, right where you're supposed to be. There's a lot That's to be said for, do we learn more from error or do we learn more from... Yeah, contrast you know, thing. There's a lot of perspective yeah, I on mean, that, how, how we all look at that. Right. I, I yeah I think so too. It's a teaching. It gets into the relative and absolute mm-hmm. views also, uh, which is a much broader discussion. But uh, I think we want to encourage you that that error does not mean God's plan crash and burn. Right? He's not dependent on us. We are dependent on Him. You know. Yeah. Uh, I think Clyde says um, you don't find truth, truth finds you. Right. Um, and there's a reason why truth finds you. We know that it's because of the act of God working on our behalf. So when error comes out or we recognize error in ourselves, we want to correct that, readjust, mm-hmm. reconnect. I think we have to be adaptable, adjustable, you know, as uh, we, we believe truth is progressive in what we have understood. God is adding to it all the time mm-hmm. in an exciting way. Mm-hmm. So, Last night, uh, my wife and I was at a pizza place we like to go to, and seemingly out of nowhere, she just said to me, well, if you were never wrong, how would you know that you were right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think so it was. If you were never wrong... Yeah, how would you know when you're right? Um, so I'm like, did wow. you just read that in a text? Yeah. Or why are you, why are you telling me that? Because we talk a lot about the contrast and this contrast principle. It's the contrast principle. Yeah. What Chris has just brought up. And so again, I don't know. And she didn't say why she said it or anything. So today I asked her and she was just laughing. She said it was behind this. We were sitting at the bar. Oh, at this piece of place. And it was on a sign down there that the, somebody had. And she was laughing like, well, I just read it. I thought you'd see that sign. I never saw it. Yeah. But somebody back there behind the bar had that on a sign. <laughs> there at a pizza place. Yeah. And it was just kind of funny. But yeah, those are big. That contrast principle is something. Mm-hmm. It is. Neat to think about. And God brings us through this. Well, yeah, we're in a. 
an age where there's a lot of error and, and a lot of misses, and and we're not immune to that. So, no, um, no, he he hasn't given us anybody with all the answers. About the, I think the closest we we've, we've decided is Paul, our apostle Paul. Yeah, and there back to the point then. What I wanted to bring out at best, we want to bring those things, bring those scriptures, and want to encourage you to keep looking at it and see what's in it for you because there's a lot there for you personally. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you don't have to be a scholar or anything to get a different little perspective shift on some of that. So maybe I'll finish with reading. There was some that I wrote down I wanted to read. Mm -hmm. um, this from Paul, of course. And this is in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For the one not knowing sin, he makes to be a sin offering for our sakes, that we may be becoming God's righteousness in him. Okay, one verse right there. I've read mm -hmm. that a lot. But what's cool and what sticks out there to me uh, now, there's a difference in in getting something, getting knowledge, or receiving this righteousness or whatever. It's that we may be becoming God's righteousness. That's really big. That's what's happening for you. Becoming, yeah. That's, That's what he's great, doing. Yeah. It's what he's great doing point. for his creation. He yeah. knows exactly what he's doing. We're not all there yet, mm -hmm. perfectly. Um, but you can start looking and seeing what you are, who you are, in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're becoming God's righteousness. Yeah, <laughs> becoming. These, these yeah. are really big this things. This is an act. It's not something you get to fix the bad old you or something. Yeah, yeah. You're becoming this new man. That's what Paul is leading up to, this mature you know, the one body of Christ and all that. That's mm -hmm. where. So let me read from Ephesians. Now a couple other verses I wrote down. Um, Ephesians 1. Yeah. 4 and 5. Who blesses us with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ, according as he chooses us in him, before the disruption of the world, we to be holy and flawless in his sight, in love, de designating us beforehand for the place of a son, for him through Christ Jesus. Okay, and this is all through his will. Um, so the idea there again, we can pull out, we've talked a lot about that and being designated beforehand and, mm -hmm. and all these things. But now what's sticking out is we to be holy and flawless. Mm -hmm. It says the idea of being blameless. Right. Without error. It's like, what? Right? Where, where are we going with that? Mm -hmm. Is that really true? And But you are you are blameless. You didn't ask to be here. You didn't ask to be created or anything. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. And so that's a big point there. I'll right. finish with Ephesians 1. Then this over here, 17. I'll have to read 17 through 19 here probably. Um Paul's making mention here in my prayers that God of that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may be giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the realization of him, the eyes of your heart having been enlightened. Okay, I like that there. That's kind of what I hope to bring today to encourage you and the prayer of Paul that the eyes of your heart to be enlightened. Yeah. And, and to think think about that and think what that means. Mm -hmm. That goes beyond knowledge. It goes yeah. beyond it goes beyond Greek scholarship. It goes beyond trying to part get the words exactly right. Okay? It goes right. it goes beyond all that. And that's for anybody out there. That's yeah. for you. That's what God's doing. That's our prayer here. That's our hope on this show is to share with you. And we hope that your the eyes of your heart become enlightened and to know that you are saved. You're blameless. You're chosen. You're loved. Right. God knows what he's doing with his creatures. Yep. And and the whole time you're reading, especially that, I can remember seeing that flawless in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. And that being scary to me because all I could see was I'm not flawless. I, right. You know, all of that stuff. And then I immediately think of an earlier show and we brought up our brother Nelson Howe. And that that is not... A, re a requisite behavior or conduct for salvation. So it, it's it's a great it's a great verse now 
to me where it used to be of fear. And I love when Dean says there is no fear mm -hmm. in, in any of this stuff. Nope. Uh, perfect love drives out fear. So That's right. All right. Well, that was good. I like that. Well, hope you all enjoyed it. Next week he'll call me and tell me to cut out half my stuff, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure and keep editing. And... So uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll um, we'll do this again. We might make a uh, might just continue this right now and make another show. Yeah, you never know what we're yeah, going to do. So we might just uh, cut this here, and because uh, I know Chris was going to bring up a lot of things we didn't get to today. So maybe we'll make another. Love you all. Take care. Have a good week.